Hello, it's Cryn here with a breakdown on missiles and other homing weapons for Armored Core 6. This is the largest category of back weapons, as missiles single-handedly takes up over half of your back-only weapon options. As a quick reminder from my FCS video, missile launchers do not need your reticle to be on the enemy to lock on. Instead, the yellow bars filling up indicates the lock-on for your missiles. Holding the missile down instead of tapping the button will load the multi-locking function for missiles that have this option. For the missile stats on my spreadsheet, I also added DPS and accumulated impact per second, which factors in the reload plus lock time. The column on the left uses base 100 missile lock correction, while the column on the right uses the 150 lock-on correction. Missile correction on the FCS does not increase the tracking abilities of your missiles, but rather reduces the time it takes for locking on to targets, so it affects missiles with longer lock-on time more. Let's begin with the three arm missiles. The basic hand missile launcher, while not very popular in PvP, is actually very good for PvE. First, it has the cheapest cost for arm missiles. It also has the lowest reload time out of all missiles, and one of the shortest missile lock-on times. What this ends up doing for the hand missile launcher is if you factor in the cooldown and missile lock-on time, you end up with these missile launchers having the highest damage per second and accumulated impact damage per second. And it even has the total missile rounds to back this up. Next, the hand split missile launcher basically trades away stats such as cost, reload, lock-on time, etc for the gimmick of splitting up. This results in a lower DPS and a much lower accumulated impact versus the normal hand missiles. I have yet to discover the usefulness of splitting the missiles up and then still end up homing in and missing the target. In fact, because of the split, many split missile launchers even have part of the missiles just running themselves into the ground when firing on flat ground. Even worse when there's an incline. I would just run the normal hand missiles over these, but if you find the splitting flight pattern to be useful, feel free to run them. The Aperitif Siege Missile Launcher is a very popular pick in PvP, and for a good reason. This weapon fires off 13 missiles in one go, and each of the 13 missiles tracks the enemy one after another, making it very difficult to fully dodge the salvo. Even if you do manage to dodge everything, it keeps your movements restricted over quite a long period of time. It also has a higher guidance stat than the other hand missile launchers, meaning that the missiles track better. While its reload time is indeed longer, its overall damage, impact damage, and lock-on time are all pretty decent and not lacking. With the continuous nature of its missiles, the siege missile launcher is indeed a very annoying weapon to deal with. Now for the back missiles, starting from the normal missile launchers. These have the same exact stats per missile. The difference is whether you're firing off 4, 6, or 10 missiles. The more missiles, the longer the reload time and lock-on time. Obviously, the higher the weight and energy load too. Makes sense, right? Mostly, this will depend on how much cost you're willing to spend for the weapon. One big difference between these missile launchers other than their cost is how many missiles they send off at once. The 4 missile launcher launches all 4 missiles in one go. The 6 missile launchers has the missiles slightly staggered, and the 10 missile launcher fires one missile after another, making these also quite difficult to fully dodge. However, these do have less guidance than the siege missile launchers, so they don't track you as closely. An important thing to keep in mind here is that the 10 missile launcher's reload time starts only after the final missile is sent off. This means that you should remember to scale back the DPS and accumulated impact in your mind, as these numbers only take into account the reload time and lock-on time. Due to the long firing sequence, there is more time in between firing the 10 missile launcher than the 4 or the 6 so they actually have a relatively similar DPS and accumulated impact. Next, the split missile launchers sort of follows the same rules for their bigger versions. The small one splits into 8, 
the medium one splits into 6 each for a total of 12. And finally, the large one splits into 8 each for a total of 16. Again, I've already said most of what I wanted to say with the arm split missiles. I personally don't see the benefits of the split, but at least the back split missiles have an overall higher DPS than the normal back missile launchers, unlike the arms version. And out of the three, I recommend the medium sized split missile launcher the most. I don't think splitting into 6 instead of 8 is any detriment at all. It seems like whatever bonus the split offers you works for both 6 or 8. But the main point is, the medium sized split missile launcher only costs a bit more for a greatly increased amount of damage. You also split your damage into two portions, one after another, making it more difficult to dodge. While the large split missile also does the same thing, the extra cost and damage is not worth the additional reload time and extended lock-on time. From the numbers, you also see that the medium split missiles give the highest DPS and accumulated DPS. So if you do want to try and make a build with split missile launchers, the medium sized P19 SPL-12 is definitely my recommended choice as the best split missile launcher. Now, I don't really see the increased benefits of the dual missile launcher, just like the split missile launcher. All I think the fancy flight pattern does is make it more liable to crashing into structures. While on paper, the pincer movement seems to make it more difficult for enemies to dodge the missiles sideways, in reality, all the missiles come at you together and it's still relatively simple to dodge with the right timing. In fact, you have lower guidance with these dual missile launchers than either the normal one or the split. Waiting until these missiles close in and dodging makes them relatively easier to deal with than expected. The difference between the P-32 and the P-08 is that the P-08 fires them pair by pair rather than all at the same time. The vertical missiles are fairly lackluster in my opinion. Thanks to having to land on pinpoint, a kiting AC can easily avoid the missiles without needing to even quick boost. They are meant to hit things behind structures, so they work better on maps with buildings. However, do keep in mind that these missiles still have to fly upwards and come down. Anything that blocks the missile's path will prevent it from actually working. The main problem is definitely having no blast radius, and despite having 480 guidance, they still outright miss kiting ACs. I don't recommend any variation of the kinetic vertical missile launchers, because if you want vertical missile launchers, I suggest the VVC 70PM, the vertical plasma missile launchers. These things are amazing and very difficult to fully dodge thanks to the way the 5 plasma missiles are positioned, in addition to its blast radius. This makes the vertical plasma missile launchers very consistent in doing chip damage without any notable downsides. Since we're talking about plasma missile launchers, we might as well cover the other two. The 703PM shoots 3 plasma missiles, while the 706PM shoots 6 plasma missiles. However, the 706 does not cover that much wider of an area versus the 703PM. Rather, the shape is more compact with a slightly upward curve. While it doesn't double the AOE size, the 706PM still covers a larger area though. Regardless of how many missile AOEs hit, you always inflict the same damage. Plasma missiles don't do more damage just because you hit the enemy in an overlapping area. Personally though, I like the vertical ones better than the 706PM and I run the 703 on even more lightweight builds because of the cost, so I find myself running the 706PM far less often, especially because it actually has less DPS and accumulated impact versus the 703, thanks to having a 50% longer reload time. I think a big part of using the 706PM is actually making use of the multi-lock system. Ah, yes, the Aurora. The main method of using these missiles, if they can even be called such, is to click it, have your hands leave the keyboard or controller, and start praying to the god of your choice. 
I have it on good word that doing so increases the chances of the Aurora's erratic projectiles to land, while you can also admire how beautiful the projectiles are. Perhaps your enemy, too, would be stunned by their beauty and freeze in place. The saddest thing is, even then, it is liable to missing by the Aurora RNG factor. Oh, and it has a tad bit of PA interference, which means it is better at breaking pulse shields. Although, compared to pulse weapons and in the grand scheme of things, this PA interference is negligible. If you haven't figured it out yet, the Aurora is a weapon I would avoid if performance is what you're seeking, mainly due to its erratic hit or miss nature, quite literally. The active homing missiles come with a one-shot version and a two-shot version. These things can seem to track surprisingly well at times or completely miss with the slightest movement because of the way missiles track. The way to dodge these missiles is really just like any other since missiles lose their guidance when close to the target. Dodge at the last second and don't let its slow speed get to you. These things are so slow, your AC can typically outpace the missiles themselves. This is not necessarily a bad thing, as it means that you can set up combos with the missile. The main selling point of these missiles is not the damage, but the impact and accumulated impact they deal. You can see here, a rare case where impact damage is actually higher than the physical damage it deals. But overall, their slow speed is just as often detrimental as it can be useful. While you can blindly fire these missiles off like a ticking bomb for a psychological attack, to truly make them shine, you definitely want to be comboing with them, unlike other missiles where you just shoot. The container missile is super weird. It has no lock-on time whatsoever, and you're sort of always in manual aim mode. If you land the initial projectile, it does absolutely nothing, so the main objective is to fire the initial projectile into the air and have it split into smaller projectiles to then home onto the target. To make full use of these missiles, I suggest firing them high into the air because the small missiles do track a fair bit of distance away. But these things do have a long 12 second reload time and targets can move out of the area fairly easily. So think of these as more of an area control tool. Overall, not very impressive. The cluster missile launcher, Delivery Boy, is the exact kind of missile I would expect dozers to use. It seems like a complete RNG role whether the main missile passes your intended target once, twice, or thrice. The numbers on the stat sheet seem to be for passing the target thrice though. Therefore, on average, this thing actually does a lot less damage than stated because it is not consistent whatsoever. And whether or not the missiles actually hit is another issue too. I'm not much of a betting man, but I would say an estimate of 1.5 hits on average is lenient. And if we divide the damage and impact numbers by half, the delivery boy is quite weak. Yes, it does have the AoE component, but you might as well multi-lock instead of waiting for a slow missile to pass over many times. Yes, it does have one of the higher direct hit adjustments at 175, but there are plenty better options for punishing a staggered enemy. So why would I want to deal with the inconsistency and come out with a mediocre result? The Soup is an interesting missile launcher that can hold a magazine size of 3 basically. You only use the reload time when you're reloading all three clips. Otherwise, you can fire them off in relatively quick succession. Other than the magazine size, they are quite similar to the normal missiles, except being a lot more expensive on energy load while having higher impact damage but lower raw damage. Because all 10 missiles fire off at the same time, it isn't a continuous stream that enemies have to keep dodging. However, the sheer quantity of missiles, because of the magazine size, can make these things a pain to deal with when fired off in quick succession. The Javelin Beta damages enemies in an AoE, sort of like the Plasma Missile Launcher. The higher guidance makes the line track pretty well, but I still find that they miss more often than the Plasma Missile Launchers, probably due to a slight delay in explosion. 
I do think that they are made for similar purposes though. For a less consistent hit, you get more impact, accumulated impact, and direct hit adjustment. Definitely a weapon worth considering in its own right. Even though, I do admit that I prefer the plasma launchers for their better consistency. The Trainos have the highest direct hit adjustment and fastest projectile speed among missile launchers. Its weight is low, and energy cost medium-ish. They're quite different from the other missiles and an amazing weapon choice in general. The biggest downside is their 4.2 seconds lock-on time, which is the second longest missile lock-on time. Therefore, the missile FCS benefits the Trainos a ton. Having a good head for scanning also benefits the Trainos more than many other launchers because you can load up your missile lock-on time before seeing the enemy behind cover. If you want to see how to combine the Trainos with a non-missile weapon, you can check out my Hunter build, which showcases just how lethal these missiles can be. Finally, we have the Coral Missile Launcher, which deals coral damage, meaning that it is unmitigated by defense. You've probably seen these things if you've played 3v3. They are very much meta, because landing a charged coral missile launcher is absolutely devastating. They can also be utilized in 1v1 too, because it craps out so many projectiles, and getting hit by the big AoE just kind of screws you over. These missiles have the longest missile lock-on time, so they also benefit from having the missile FCS and a good scanner headpiece. The coral missiles are also the costliest homing weapons, coming in at 783 energy load, but it is well worth the destructive power when utilized properly. In fact, I think these are too OP, especially in the more chaotic 3v3. It even has 185 direct hit adjustment. If someone gets staggered halfway through these things exposing, they're pretty much doomed. And it isn't even that difficult considering its own impact damage. Charging doesn't even take up more ammo. You have way many chances to land gigantic hits as a missile bolt, and this definitely could use a nerf. Last but not least, the laser drones. This is technically not a missile launcher, but it is a homing weapon that still benefits off missile lock correction. This is also the only other homing weapon that you can charge. These things can be very annoying in PvP, because while it is not difficult to dodge most of the laser drone's hits, it is difficult to dodge all of them. This weapon is great at putting pressure on your opponent by chipping away at their health. Charging it does make the attacks more powerful, but fewer drone attacks also means it can be overall easier and more obvious to dodge. While the laser drones have the shortest lock-on time of 0.3 seconds, I do suggest a good scanner head too, particularly one with long scan distance and short scan CD. The reason is, you can cast these even behind cover, so you're not using the scanner to shorten the lock-on time, but rather to continuously put pressure on your enemy whenever possible. It's time for the summary. For the arm missiles, the normal missiles are the missiles with the highest DPS and accumulated impact per second thanks to their short reload and lock-on time. These are really useful in PvE. I don't see much use for splitting the missile up, but if you do think it makes you land more consistently, you're basically trading some stats for the split missile launcher over the normal version. The Aperitif's 13 missiles come one after another, making it very time costly to dodge all of them. This is especially deadly as it has 220 guidance, making it the most popular hand missile choice in PvP. For the normal back missiles, this mostly depends on the cost you're willing to pay. Unlike the 4 missile or 6 missile version, the 10 missile launcher also sends missile after missile, but its guidance isn't as high as the aperitifs, and you can be interrupted by a stagger. The backsplit missile launchers actually have higher DPS and impact damage than the regular back missiles. In particular, the medium sized one, P19 SPL 12, that fires two missiles that splits into six missiles each, has the best power to cost ratio, and also higher DPS than the large one. 
This is my most suggested split missile launcher. I have not really found a reason to run the dual missile launcher over the normal one or the split one. I don't really think exchanging the flight pattern for lower guidance is a great trade, as the missiles still need to home in on the target after all. Furthermore, there isn't an option that is outstanding, unlike the split missiles. Therefore, I personally don't run these, nor do I run any of the physical vertical missile launchers. The issue with these is that since there is no explosion radius, simply moving or kiting on an AC dodges them already. They're very easy to dodge in PvP without even needing to quick boost, and is restricted by ceilings in PvE. They're definitely more usable in PvE though, but overall, I would recommend the vertical plasma launchers, as these are difficult to avoid due to having an AoE and the positioning they drop down in. I find this option much more superior without additional costs. Talking about the plasma launchers, both the 703PM and the 706PM are pretty good, as the 703PM already covers quite a large area. This is extremely good on lightweight builds without needing to pay for the more expensive 706PM that doesn't do more damage but has a higher reload time. The 706PM does still cover a larger area though, so if you want to make sure you're hitting a moving target, this can still be the better bet. The Aurora is inconsistent by nature, able to miss even standing targets. For a weapon with a relatively high energy load cost and missile lock-on time, it has no outstanding attributes whatsoever. The Aurora cannot even qualify as a jack of all trades, so I would avoid this so-called lightwave cannon if performance is what you seek. The active homing missile launchers are very slow, but do a ton of impact and accumulated impact damage. While these can track fairly well across a distance, the slightest enemy movement when the missiles get close often causes them to miss. To make these shine, you want to be doing combos with your other weapons to really make these work. The container missile launcher is a manual aim launcher that you want to shoot into the air so that the smaller missiles can properly find their target. It can really put forth the work for area control but the overall damage when factoring in the reload time isn't great, especially when enemies can move out of the area. Therefore, not a good back weapon. The delivery boy is very fickle in nature. Its overall damage depends on how many times the main missile wants to pass over the target. Because you have to deal with its inconsistencies, despite its weight and energy load, these aren't great back weapons either. The soup is the only missile launcher with a magazine size, only having to do the long reload time after using up all 3 shots. Their damage is skewed more towards impact damage rather than raw damage. The strategy here is definitely to overwhelm your enemy with raw quantity. The Javelin Beta, I find, is most similar to the plasma launchers. The high guidance is enough to draw some pretty wild shapes to chase down the enemy and it covers a wide enough area that makes it difficult to dodge sideways. However, I do find that they can still miss quite often from the delayed explosion. But for this, they are given more impact, direct impact, and direct hit adjustment versus the plasma launchers. The Trainos have the fastest projectile on this list, making these powerful options even when launched at neutral. It also has the highest direct hit damage adjustment among missiles, which combined with their speed makes them good at punishing staggers as well. The only downside you have to overcome when using the Trainos is its long lock-on time of 4.2 seconds. The Coral Missile Launcher is expensive on the energy load and has the longest missile lock-on time, but charging this weapon up makes it well worth it, producing absolutely OP numbers, especially in 3v3. Finally. The laser drone is not a missile, but a homing weapon. However, it still uses the missile lock correction. Thanks to their low lock-on time and annoying to avoid nature, these are super good options alongside the vertical plasma launchers for targets behind cover, which is why 
It is also particularly useful to pair these with a head that has good scanning distance and short CD. Anything not mentioned in this video is not a missile or homing weapon. Like and subscribe. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.